All right, so we're testing for a coil. We've been using this. This one here is from a later model Dodge, um, like a Dodge Ram 1500, say like 1999, 2000 model. And it has a pretty low uh, ohm rating. Uh, it reads around two, let's see, about two ohms. Okay, this round coil is a 12 volt coil and it says no external resistor required. So it's an internally resisted coil. It reads just over four ohms of resistance. And we have uh, this old old uh, used Delco Remy coil, and I believe it says Delco Remy. So that's a Delco Remy coil. coil. I believe this is the one that was on the Studebaker before. So it ran when you got that engine running. No, you don't know. Okay. I don't think that's. I think this blue one's the one that we got the Studebaker running with. Okay. Which I think was a mistake, but I'm not even sure. This one reads somewhere around. It's open. Oh no, it's not. Rusty. 2.7. Three, 2.7. The terminals will need clean. So we've got a two, a three, and a four ohm coils. We also have the option to use ballast resistor. You can put the spades back on and hook up the factory ballast resistor again. The reason we're talking about doing any of this is that our timing became a fiasco. I did a vi we did a video just a couple weeks ago about uh, I rebuilt the distributor that was for this car. Um, I took it out, took it all apart, welded up the slots for mechanical advance limiting, and put it back in there. And when we got it started, and put the timing light on it, I couldn't make heads or tails of what was going on. Because I mechanically looked at it. I knew exactly what the motion in the distributor should be doing, and it was doing opposite. So... I, start, I set the timing somewhere around 10 to 15 degrees advanced for a nice, nice hot idle. And so I was expecting to get about 7 to 10 degrees of mechanical advance out of this distributor. Two light springs, so it should come in quick, and it'll be all in. So, and then I could adjust from there. That's not what was happening. I was... Uh, I set it nice smooth idle, 15 degrees before top dead center. Sounded great. When I rev, uh, my timing light shows that instead of advancing, the timing is retarding. Um, to the point where just by ear, 2500 or 3000 RPM, when all the mechanical advance should be in, it was retarding back to, to zero. To, to no advance at all, which just doesn't make any sense. Well, I did some uh, research, internet hackery, and uh, checked the forums uh, because we're using, this is not a points distributor, this is an electronic pickup, and uh, it, it's clearly working or the engine wouldn't be firing. This here is a GM style HEI ignition module and it is uh you know of some type of dubious descent and although it works works it clearly fires the engine but it does it doesn't work right it is wrong it adds retard 
a lot of retarded because if we have if we have seven degrees of mechanical advance, seven to 10 degrees of mechanical advance coming in and we're still retarding, that means this unit is taking out more than 15 degrees worth of ed timing advance at, you know, like 3000 uh, cruising speed. <laughs> That's just very wrong. And what it is, most likely, is just really cheap parts. Um, the units, they were incredibly cheap. Um, but they're, they're absolutely worthless. Scam quality. They do fire the ignition, but not in a way that's usable. Um, they can't keep up with a six-cylinder... If you were to put this in a V8, it's going to be even worse because the timing is going to be, you know, hitting this quicker. So, we're scrubbing it. The so, whole what's, thing. It, what's your, what's your, the whole your, thing? We're scrubbing this. Got to um, go back to points. We're, 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 I have another distributor the, out of the 66 Dart. It's a points distributor. I, I tore it all down. I, I checked out the insides. It's a, an 11 and a half mechanical at in distributor degrees. So crank de degrees is double because of the gearing for the camshaft. And this runs off the cam. So 11 and a half becomes 23 degrees. Of mechanical advance built in from the factory unit and a um, nine and a half vacuum pod that's that's great it's you know it's not like racing it's just street setup and we'll be able to adjust the vacuum I switched out the fixed vacuum pod for a adjustable vacuum pod so we can kind of fine-tune it for some vacuum Maybe do some trick stuff so it actually pushes the advance out of it for the turbo. We'll see. Um, clean up the points, the rubbing blocks, everything is all, it's, it's ready to go. We should drop this in and we should be able to put the timing light on it and just, it should just work. It should just work. Not the most best performance ever, not the most long term between service intervals, but just work. And I hate to have to do that, but if I can't get parts, I, I have to make it work. Right to repair. I got I, I need to be allowed to make my vehicle run. And the other direction is to get an MSD box. Get an MSD box, you'll get uh, CDI discharge, uh, multi-spark, the whole deal but you're spending hundreds of dollars. If that unit goes out while you're on the road, you're dropping another couple hundred dollars to buy a replacement, you know? So that's not a lot of money in today's world, you know? Uh, I guess you have an extra MSD box in the trunk in case you have a failure. Points, we're doing points. Tony will like working on points with the turbo. This is a 72 model car came with points so we're going old school we're gonna put the points on there obviously we can change it out later if we find that this isn't gonna work but we're gonna do some parts matching get a point set up working on here get a tune where we can actually do a timing curve and then we're able to enjoy it because right now i don't think we're getting anything like we're supposed to as far as performance out of here it's it's flat under your foot when you try and go somewhere so, enough of that. All right. Um, and so, so we got a little test read here. We know that points are set. I just I'm holding them open so I can hook up these wires. We have positive battery. Positive, 
12 volt on the ignition coil. Negative to the negative that goes to the points. Negative goes from the body of the distributor to negative of the battery. There's your circuit and we have our test. From this angle you'll better be able to see the spark plug. I've got it set to a nice little gap and we just want to see this is just proof of concept that it's gonna Oh, I can see a spark. And then I'm going to see what you're doing. Check out the points. See how hard they're sparking. Shouldn't see a lot of spark there. That's low voltage. Yeah, but yeah that's, that's working quite well. I think that will run a car. Another coil. We're onto this blue coil. The one this, that's a non, uh, non-resistor coil. This one says it doesn't need an external resistor. So... There's the spark plug. Oh, you have spark. That looks pretty good. Yeah, but I, we don't know what that's doing to the points. When you have well, one, when you have one without without uh, a ballast resistor, and it's that you can burn the points up. I've done that before. Oh yeah. But if this one's internally resisted... It means it is okay, but we don't know that. We don't know exactly what's going on. Well, we on. measured it. Okay, yeah. So this is higher resistance, so this should actually be less wear and tear on the points, as long as it gives us an adequate amount of spark. Okay. Which, that looked like a pretty good spark. Oh, it's a real good spark. So I think we have two solid test... We have two solid test coils. I think either one of them will probably function. So, we're going to pull this bogus, well, it's not the HEI's fault, it's not the distributor's fault, you understand it's the control, the HEI unit's fault. And we could just splurge and buy the most expensive HEI unit we could get, splurge and buy a CDI ignition box and use the distributor that's in there, and it would work. But we're adding layers of complexity that we don't want to dump on anybody. And Tony said he'll help us with the turbo, so he'll like to see points. That's his alley. He'll be right up his alley. And so we're going to do that. That's how we're going to do this. Does anybody see anything that we're doing wrong? Yeah, tell us after. Hurry up and tell us what we did wrong. Okay. The choke is going to be wide open. Oh, jeez. The column moves in and out. Oh, don't pull on the column too much. Yeah, I noticed that. You just operate the gas and the key, get her to start. Um, go ahead and give it a win. Uh, go ahead and crank it. Let me make sure the timing's where I think it was. Hold on. I'm I'm frustrated. Back off. <sighs> Why are old cars so hard? Hard? They don't bend like a newer Jeep when a deer hits it. <laughs> I did put some of the dash back together. I see that. We're getting the buttons there. are in there. Yeah, and uh, there's a bunch of cables and hoses. It's all hooked up now. I need to take the glove compartment door down to the house. I don't know. That's a good plan. I think yeah. it's just some Phillips screws. We'll do yeah. that. Yeah, and finish it. Then the whole dash will match. Yeah. Here's fuel system. We've got a pump over there, a uh, fuel pressure regulator, some gauges and stuff. This is close. I don't know. So why won't it start? Not enough gas, or, or is it the ignition problem? I think I still haven't done the ignition right. Okay, show us the cup holders. The cu these cup holders, 1972 style cup holders. Well, see, this was probably meant to be level. Well, there so. is a cable there on the side. Right, it's right. Disconnected. So this thing would be level. It would, if you were parked, they might not spill. At your cars and coffee breakfast, while you're parked, you can set your coffee there. It's a coffee tray. Okay, so are you ready to start yet? I, I believe I am now. We finally got it. I had to. Okay, so tell me. In and out and in and out and in and out and for uh I'm I've got the choke propped open. Okay, that's good. So go ahead, yeah, and use whatever you need to do and get it going.
missing a little. It's missing a little. Well, it's a lot lower quality spark than what the HEI put out. The timing is right, but the quality is worse. It's a weaker spark. We might need to gap those plugs down to 30 or 32. What are they now? I don't know. I thought we did that. Did you shut it off? I shut it off. Okay. It smells really rich. Yeah, well, it's because it's missing. Okay. It's still in the exhaust pipe with gasoline. Yeah, it's missing because that that's a really low power coil, and uh, the dwell might be wrong, and it. But if the timing's right, but then the what could be really wrong is we've got those. Like you said, the spark plugs might be gapped for uh, a wider gap. I think we had them 45. We closed them up to, what, 35? Yeah, and they should be probably 30 or 32 for I don't know points, tops. I don't know. They don't have to be that wide. We could close them up more, and they'll definitely fire. So let's try that. Okay. Or we could try it another time and be done for today. We can be done for today. That's fine. All right. We'll say goodbye to YouTube, and we'll be done for today. My light quit. What light? This light. Oh, it's USB. You gotta plug it in. Okay. Okay. Bye for now.